Hi, and welcome to our video on using a timeline to help you organize your remembered event paper. For your remembered event paper, you need to be sure that your story is very clearly organized so that the reader can follow what's going on in the story. To make the order of your event clear, you might want to put your details in a timeline. A timeline will help you organize your information, and it will help you make sure that you're using the correct verb tenses. Please see the example below using the story, The Rotisserie on Wheels, which is available on the class website. If you look at now in the lower right hand corner, you see that now is in the present tense. Okay. If you talk about something after now, you put that in the future tense. That's something that will happen. It has not happened yet. For all of the events that you're going to be writing about, you're going to want to use some form of the past tense because you're talking about an event that happened in the past. So if you look uh, right before the now, you're using the simple past tense. So for example, if you think about the story, I talked about how I drove home, how I parked the car, how the car caught on fire. Those are all in the simple past tense. Now, in the story, when I'm writing about things that happened before I drove home, before I parked the car and before the car caught on fire, I'm using what's called the past perfect tense. Okay. If you remember back to maybe your leap classes, uh, maybe your English 1030 classes, uh, they talked about tenses. Uh, the past perfect tense is a tense that uses a verb and a helping verb. Okay, or an auxiliary verb. So if you look, before I drove home and parked the car, I had bought oil in the morning. Okay, so had bought is the past perfect tense of buy, of to buy. Okay, before, or before I bought the oil in the morning, two weeks before that, the car had begun leaking oil. So again, I'm using the past perfect tense. Okay, I'm it's saying had begun, which is the past perfect tense of to begin. And even before that, okay, even before the car had begun to leak, I had gotten the car from my sister. Okay, so again, I'm still using the past perfect tense, had gotten, which is the past perfect of to get. Okay, so if you look at the progression of the tenses, we start in the past tense because I'm remembering this event. Past tense, I drove home, I parked the car, the car caught on fire. Before that, I had bought oil in the morning. Before that, I, it had begun leaking oil two weeks ago. And before that, I had gotten the car from my sister. So look at how the tenses are all laid out on the timeline. Throughout your story, you also might want to use time markers. And these just help the reader follow your story and their words or phrases that indicate when certain parts of your story take place. Time markers include words or phrases like early one evening uh, or one early evening, on his or her way back, that same night, the next morning, just before lunch as the dinner bell rang, that night, suddenly, when, then, after, before, later. Okay, these are all time markers that you put into your story in strategic places to let the reader know the sequence of events. Okay. So let's look at some of the time markers used in this little bit of sample text from the Rotisserie on Wheels. As I stood sweating and cursing in the university parking lot, however, I despised the car. It had begun leaking oil a couple of weeks earlier, and I had told my dad about it. But each time I talked to him about the car, I was met with a distracted, huh? Oh, yeah, right. We'll take it to the shop soon, kiddo. Then he would turn his attention back to whatever game happened to be on television. I hated being at his mercy, but what could I do? I didn't have the money to get the car fixed myself, so I had to wait on him to have it done. I begin this paragraph with a time marker, as I stood sweating and cursing. 
okay? So you know what is happening in the story. Then I say it had begun leaking oil, okay, a couple of weeks earlier. So I'm telling you that while I was standing there sweating, okay, a couple of weeks earlier it had begun leaking oil. Then I say I had told my dad about it, okay. And then each time I talked to him about the car, that lets the reader know that there were several times that I had told my dad about the car, okay. So each time I talked to him, um, then he would turn his attention, okay. So I would talk to him and then after I talked to him, that's when he would go back to watching whatever TV show he was watching, okay. So those are just a few of the time markers uh, that are present in the entire story that I wrote that's posted on the website. So some reminders for you to keep in mind. Time markers help you as a writer organize your story. It helps you as the writer keep the events in your story in the correct sequence, okay? And it helps uh, you as the writer give the reader a sense of time. Now those same time markers also help readers because they help readers understand the organizational structure of your story. They help the reader follow the sequence of events in your story. And they help the reader picture what is happening and when in the story. So if you have any questions, please, please see your instructor or visit the University Writing Center in 031 Library for additional assistance. See you next time.